Hi everyone. I am so excited to share with you news about an exquisite musical production that's coming to Cleveland next week at the Moltz Performing Arts Center in University Circle. It's called The Sparks Fly Upward. I want to also introduce to you today two of my dearest friends, Kathy Lesser Mansfield and Jeff Lesser. I want to share that in 2008, I had the opportunity to go to Des Moines, Iowa to see the world premiere of this production. And I went specifically because my friend Kathy not only is the composer, but also the librettist. So Kathy, welcome. Thank you. And I'm wanting to ask you a question because I know some people when they hear the word opera, they get a little nervous. Yep, I it's understand that. It's not for that. everybody. <laughs> I know other people when they hear opera, they get very excited. But why are we calling this production an opera? And is it an opera in the traditional way that people know opera to be? So it's a really good question, and the problem has always been that this piece lives somewhere on that line right between musical theater and opera. The music's kind of like Les Mis, you know, it's, it's sung through, there's very little speaking, just occasionally. Um, it's very melodic. Uh, the voices are beautiful, but we have a mix, I would say, of Broadway voices and operatic voices, and of course Kathy's voice, which is wonderful. Well, thank you, um, so I've never really mm -hmm. known what to call it. And um, so that's why we call it an opera slash musical drama. Um, but I think people will find the music very accessible and um, I agree with you. tonal. Yeah, it's beautiful music. And we also call that because it's sung through. There's, there's very little speaking. So that also right. is and a I reference can attest, to The music is exquisite. Thank um, you. Friends, I have the joy of being part of a 34-person cast. And just this week on Monday we're going to be meeting for the first time with a 36 member full orchestra and it's going to be amazing. I'm so excited. I don't know that everybody knows about the story, Kathy. Can you tell us a little bit uh, what the storyline is, what it sure. involves? Yeah, so um, you know you, you probably have seen some material about it. It's, it's about the Holocaust, but it's not so much about the big Holocaust as it is about these three families as they, as they are forced through the Holocaust years. Um, but at the same time, the bigger events in Berlin where it takes place unfold around this family. And then there's another layer to the story where um, the family tells the story of Job from the book of Job mm -hmm. and addresses some of the questions about, you know, where's God when bad stuff like this happens. Um, and so it, it follows these three families from 1938 to 1945. And then at times when they're in hiding and telling the story of Job, what you see on stage is the first, like Kristallnacht, you know, which was November 9th and 10th, 1938, and then the first arrest and deportation of Jews in Berlin, which took place in October of 1941 um, on Yom Kippur, of all things, mm -hmm. and then something called the Factory Action, which was the largest uh, raid of forced labor jobs, places for Jews. Um, that took place in February of 1943. So, you know, you, you get, it, it stops at these big events. And then the end of the war, the final scene is in May of 45, when Berlin was liberated. And then there's an epilogue um, in the 1990s when the synagogue, there, there's actually a couple synagogue scenes, which is why Silver's Hall is the perfect, perfect. place to do this. It's going to be um, amazing in that, in that space. Yeah, the synagogue scenes with the ark behind them are, are just going to be incredible. But then there's a, a final scene where they rededicate this actual synagogue in Berlin. And since you brought up the synagogue scene, I mean, we should mention Jeff. But by the way, I don't think I told our friends, Jeff Lesser, Kathy Lesser Mansfield. This is a brother-sister team. My baby brother. True. That's right. It is true. That's right. But um, I'm wondering, Jeff, maybe you want to speak to uh, these three families that Kathy's talking about. Two of them are Jewish. Right. One is German Jewish. One is, one is Polish Jewish. Right. But tell us a little bit about the third family, because here at the temple, we have quite an amazing Holocaust education program, not only for Kristallnacht and for Yom HaShoah, but throughout the year. And we often speak about the righteous Gentiles. Right. So tell us a little bit about so that the third, third family. family. And again, they all live in the same apartment building. That's how they know each other. And the third family is a couple who is childless. Um, they are not Jewish, but they are like the aunt and uncle to all the kids. And so they are they are important in the story of showing that they realized how wrong what was happening and was going on around them and they helped to hide the families and to try to keep them safe. So it's really an amazing emotional, which is one of the things that I love about this piece. It's all about relationships and, 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 and making those relationships stronger and how you 
feel about the person and trying to protect the person, and that all comes together in, in the right. opera. So while well, Kathy, you're the composer and the librettist, Jeff, you are directing this show. I am. Now back in 2008, when it premiered in Des Moines, you were involved with the production as well. What was. was your role at that so point? So at that point, I was the assistant director, which was great. But actually, my journey with this started long before that because in the late 70s, uh, Kathy first wrote it as we called it back then a rock opera. It wasn't very rock, uh, of the Job story. And it was oh. done here in Cleveland at the Jewish Community Center. In the old Halley Theater? In the old Halley oh, Theater. Field Road. I missed that theater. And I played God. Oh, did you? I did. It was typecasting. I know typecasting. some people who like playing God. <laughs> kind of like being the director. Yeah, right. So now you're the director. And now I'm the director. So what we did the, the Des Moines was just a one night. And it was, it was a staged, I called it almost like a stage reading. We had a big chorus instead of people acting as the chorus. It was done in front of a chorus. We had costumes. We had some sets. This is the first production where we're really presenting it just on its own. The chorus people who play many, many roles in it and are instrumental in moving things and being part of the story are, are really important in this, in this production. Mm -hmm. And so this is the first time where it's all really coming together as a stage piece. You know, when you mentioned the chorus, uh, you triggered a little thought for me, and that is that this Friday evening for Shabbat services, we have our special Nefesh Shabbat service, the rabbis and I, along with our six-piece band, beautiful musicians, are going to do a special Shabbat service. It also happens to be Pride Shabbat, which we're very, very thrilled to, to be a part of. But we have a little surprise, and I'm only telling you, so don't, go, <laughs> don't tell everybody. But of our 34 members in the cast, I believe 22 of them will be joining us for Shabbat services. And following the silent prayer, you're going to hear something quite exquisite from the opera that will be just exquisite, beautiful. It's lush, the harmonies, it's gorgeous. You're going to hear a little bit of Hebrew. There is some Hebrew in the yes, opera. Right. Very little, but there is some Hebrew, but the opera is in English. Yep. So you will hear this piece from the opera following the silent prayer. So I hope you'll join us for the Nefesh Shabbat service at 6 p.m. for many, many reasons. You know, the, the production opens Thursday, June 9th, right? Mm -hmm. And we have four performances. Let's review when those dates are. Okay. Uh, so th uh, Thursday, June 9th at 7.30. Okay. Uh, Friday, June 10th at 7.30. Saturday, uh, the 11th at 7.30. And then Sunday, the 12th is a matinee at 2 p.m. Right, and there's still tickets available. At the Maltz Performing Arts Center, yes. we should R say. Right, at the Maltz Performing Arts Center. So we are hoping that you will go to either the website for the Maltz Performing Arts Center. The website will be at the end of this video. You'll see it on your screen. Or it's even easier, in my opinion, just to call the box office at the Maltz Performing Arts Center. And that will also be on the screen. Probably we'll also put up the Sparks Fly Upward website as well. If you call the Performing Arts Center, you'll probably have to leave your name and phone number. And they're very good at returning calls within, within the hour they called me back. So I'm hoping you will all join us for what will be a meaningful, inspirational, and incredibly moving musical and theatrical experience. So Jeff, Kathy, thank you for your time. Thank you. I wish all of us the best of luck. Yes. It's, this is a big undertaking, but it's going to be spectacular. Amazing. The cast is spectacular, Amazing. and your canter is spectacular. Amazing. Well, thank you. I, I, I'll slip you the $20 bill later. <laughs> Anyhow, thank you all so much. We hope to see you for the sparks fly upward.